I tie my laces and walk adjacent to father's patience. Right next to Satan, the sin lies that come me raiment. Can't go complacent, my heart is racing, the Lord is waiting. I follow in his footsteps, it's not complicated. I've been living in this hell, so I gotta make it. This me chance, so I gotta take it. So I gotta take it. Brothers been tripping for too long, so I've been walking face up through the mud with my boots on. And I'll be damned if I do wrong. I just hate when the news on. Cause all I'm seeing is depression and oppression all up in their face. And they wanna give up on a day by day. Just know the Lord, He is making a way. So if you keep in the faith, hold your head high, it's gonna be okay. And I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block The mama saw the pain when I walk, I walk If she hates how I talk, why you talk like that? Burn clothes in my two sacks See the block is getting too high Time's running low, need a new watch They fell for the new watch that thing, that thing. I really, really wish you knew that you have been through all these extreme things. I'm trying to figure out what happened to you and me, bang. Trying to figure out what happened to you and the I'm flipping on the nose and hear the blues when I see things. I see hatred all around. Fighters and murders with a frown. My brother in a puddle on the ground. Like, what the hell we gonna do now? When everything is going south. Remember who you are, pick up your car. My people feel no more. Feel no pain when they kill no more. I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on, oh, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block. Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block. The mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk. And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that, like that? Feel We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. Christ in you. You're my brother. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. I see my my bros that be better than me. Truth be told. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. This is what we must do to avoid and be. Truth be told. Truth be told. In blacks and Hispanics, our family. Truth be told, truth be told. I just pray you see Christ when you see me. Truth be told, truth Watch be this. told. These men spoke wisdom because they understood the scriptures. 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 Our people in that stronghold, and again, that's why our communities are in the shape that they're in because of sin. Yeah, we bring out Christ's black people. 
People say color don't matter, but yet they ride into the movie theaters on elephants with kente claws right. because of a black superhero, but the color of Christ All don't matter. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, is for instruction in righteousness. That hidden ones because our people don't know that we're the Israelites according to the Bible. now tuned in to truth be told shalom most high in christ bless you are now tuning into truth be told dc broadcasting live be sure to tune in every tuesday at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time to hear the truth according to the bible hosted by iuic dc for music clothing and instruments of learning Visit OriginalRoyalty.com and IsraelUnite.org. Shalom. Shalom, fam. Welcome back to Truth Be Told DC. I'm Officer Matthew. To my left. Officer Phineas. Officer Mendel. To my right. Officer Micah. So today's show topic is busted the plot to effeminize the black man. So it was uh, the brother uh, Kwame Brown did a radio show. He had Judge Joe Brown on it. And they was going over some stuff, you know, how they set out these traps and things, how they now was like the agenda to really effeminize the men, you know, just make a total beta male production line. So we're going to see if that's in the scriptures. So before we get there, you want to say something, officer? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, uh, Judge Joe Brown, he was in um, – Hollywood and all that. So he saw a lot of stuff. And uh, he was, man, he was one of the top rated shows right. in the country. So he saw a lot of stuff. And, he, you know, it was an interesting conversation. It's a rated R. This ain't the same Judge Joe Brown you Not see on all. TV. Not at all. <laughs> He's, uh, so we're just going to put that out there. Version, so we yeah. just let you know. So if you got any, like, like this people that's sensitive, just shut it down now because Judge Joe Brown, he don't hold back. Right. He getting some of that mama's cooking. He about to, he about to. He about to, yeah. Let's go ahead and get that John 8, 32 real quick. The book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth is, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you make up the 12 tribes of Israel. In these last days, the Lord is calling us back to repentance. So let's go ahead and open up with that video. We're going to go to about three minutes. About three minutes and 30 seconds. Go ahead and roll that thing with uh, uh, Kwame Brown and Judge Joe Brown. We live with uh, Mr. Judge Joe Brown. How, how, what do you want to be called? Mr. Judge Mr. Joe Brown? Is redundant. That's like. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. But anyway, I got elected my second eight year term. So the governor sent me this certificate saying, Congratulations, you judge for the rest of your life as a title. I guess that's like Colonel, but I'm not cooking fried chicken. You know, <laughs> barbecue got a new barbecue line, but Judge Joe work right. Okay. That's my performing name. Years ago when SAG After wanted to get me on board, I had to pick one. I couldn't pick my name, but they said Judge Joe will do fine. Judge Joe Brown. So that's me. Official okay. title and performing title and, you know. Well, welcome, welcome. Well, we're going to get right into it. I mean, I don't know if you've been uh, abreast of what's going on with me. I uh, started with a little... <laughs> Misunderstanding with a former teammate and then a, a peer that I don't know uh, really that good with Matt Barnes. I call him Becky with the good hair. But uh, he invited me to his man parts after a, a simple disagreement that I tried to get them to correct behind the scenes. But, you know, if you understand how these gentlemen think, they're a little bit immature. So I brought you on. Uh, you want to put childish? Yeah. <laughs> so I call them the go along, get along game. So and since I've been calling, oh, I like that mug. <laughs> I have a few of these. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Since I called them the go along, get along gang, I've been uh, doxxed like no other. Um, my family history has come out in the Breakfast Club. Um, Jamel Hill has come out and spoken about me uh, and then tried to have plausible deniability saying she was talking about a game. Um, just Stephen A. Smith, 
saying a narrative that he wanted to say. And then now we have Dr. Boyce Watkins who inserted himself into it. So well, son, is there a go-along, get-along gang or no? Son, when you get start trending, you start getting attention paid to you. And mm -hmm. when we, in my generation, we'd say when somebody's half-stepping, they try to slow everybody down and put concrete out there for them to get mired in when the concrete hasn't set. But if you just step on out, wipe your feet off, you know, you can go do it. It's like dog shit, you know. <laughs> when you're dealing with dog shit, you know, you got to avoid stepping in it. Yeah. But they try to put it in front of you so you keep running into it. Yeah. My thing with the Breakfast Club is it's poisonous. Part of this agenda of pushing this narrative of LGBT, Q. I, A plus, whatever in the hell it is right now. I don't have anything against somebody being gay. What you do in your own damn bedroom is your own damn business. But when you start trying to mess yeah, it up for everybody he brought, he else. Brought, uh, you he brought a butt up to the uh, show. Did you see yeah. that show? <laughs> you know, that whole crew, I challenged them to a debate. I said I'd whip their behinds, but they won't take the old man on. You know, I just said I know it'll be embarrassing. Old man whips all three of you one at a time. It's your option. Right. And when you look at that show, they just glorify gossiping and cooning. And like you said, it just pushes an LGBT agenda on our people, man. Go ahead, officer. Yeah, he was saying it was the, uh, what did he say, go along to get along. So, meaning what? Did they push in the agenda of Esau? That's what they're doing. They just pushing the agenda. Whatever Esau wanna push, he used them them as a mouthpiece to push it onto our people. Right now they pushing the gay rights and all this other stuff, forcing all this stuff on you. So let's go ahead and get this. Watch this in Psalms. We're gonna go to Psalm seventy three. We're gonna start at verse one. The, the book of Psalms, chapter seventy three and verse one. Truly God is good to Israel. To who? To Israel. Uh -huh. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Meaning those Israelites that's keeping the commandments. Come on. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my steps had well nigh slipped. Mm -hmm. For I was envious at the foolish. Right, because that's talking about them on a the radio show. Like, damn, Charlemagne got the money. They doing this, doing that. You can get envious at the foolish people because trust and believe they only put the foolish coons up in your eyesight for you to imitate coonery. Read. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I saw what? The prosperity of the wicked. Make no mistake about it. That's letting you know the foolish people, they not just foolish, but they wicked. And Esau gives them money and fame yep. and prosperity. Understand that to throw you off, read. For there are no bands in their death, mm -hmm. but their strength is firm. Right. So no matter what they do, they getting upheld by the media, man. Come on. They are not in trouble as other men. Right. You can see they, Charlemagne out there with uh, uh, underage sex. This brother out there, but now they sweep that under the rug because he part of the go-along, get-along gang. Read on. Neither are they plagued like other men. Right. You see what they're doing to Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown coming out here flaming up these coons, man. Understand that, but now they releasing his family history, yeah, yeah. putting his address out on the street. But meanwhile, him. this dude did some under was dealing with a minor. Ain't nothing you don't even hear about that in the media. Come and he's, on, and he's still on a national uh, right. syndicated show. Right, come on. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Uh huh. They, they, the way you you wrapped up and bound in the chain. If you ever seen Hannibal, how they had him chained to the little gurney? That's how they are with their pride, man. They can't escape that mess. Read on. There. Are, Violence covered them as a garment. Mm -hmm. And they got, and who the, the violent that they got covering them is the Edomite, Esau. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Mm -hmm. They have more than heart could wish. Right. Their eyes is always at the more money, more fame. They got more, they, they done propped up. They got more than anybody could imagine, but yet they want more and more money, man, because they envy and their oppressor. Read on. They are corrupt uh -huh. and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Right. So now we this really going into Esau, but Esau uses our people to push his narrative. Like our people become one mind yeah. with this man. But make no mistake about it. This is talking about Esau and his agenda and the coons he set up of our people. You want to say something, officer? 
Yeah, I was going to say, they don't really like, you know, Kwame Brown coming out hitting with truth. So they got to send the good coons because Esau can't attack them because if they attack them, they're going to be racist. And, right. You know, this and that. So what they got to do is they got to get their super coons to go after this brother. But he, he picking them apart, though. Right. Man. Well, we're going to see if, if if brothers that stood up for the truth and stood up for their people. Because, you know, I mean, we know the brother not in the truth, but the brother out there building houses for uh single mothers and things like that. He actually doing things in the community that's not even being covered to help his people. What are these coons up there on these radio shows doing? Nothing but attacking black men, man. Come on. They set their mouth against the heavens uh-huh. and their tongue walketh through the earth. Right. That's what the media, Charlemagne and the Breakfast Club all over the world. A, a total panel of coons and sellouts, man. Come on. Therefore his people return hither, mm -hmm. and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Read on. And they say... How doth God know? Mm. And is there knowledge in the Most High? Right, because they, man, God don't know what we're doing. Is there any knowledge in that Bible? We don't need to follow that Bible, man. Read. Behold, these are the ungodly. Oh, uh, the what? These are the ungodly uh -huh. who prosper in the world. Mm -hmm. They increase in riches. Right, and you see these people set up. Chiefly Esau, the one that's really making money, but as he making money, he break off a few crumbs to people that's pushing his narrative. So let's go to First Maccabees. Let's get an account of the Bible. Let's see what this say about some of these good coons, man. Read that. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 11 and verse 21. Uh-huh. Then certain ungodly persons. Then certain what? Ungodly persons. Didn't we just read that in Psalm 73. Read. Who hated their own people. Who did what? Who hated their own people. By pushing narratives to effeminize black men. By getting on there, slandering other black men. Talking about, this brother's a bust. He ain't this. He ain't that. Go and, on, uh, and allowing white men to speak uh, evil about black men on their right, clothes. Right, right. And white women. Right. Yeah, you got, uh, what's the name? Get uh, on there talking uh, about she got hot sauce in her pocket. Uh, what's the name? Hillary well, Clinton and right. um, Joe Biden. Right. And they don't say nothing. He talking about, y'all niggas ain't black if you don't vote for me. And Charlemagne up there laughing like a courtyard jester, man. Come on. Who hated their own people. Read it from the top again. Then certain ungodly persons. So these are wicked people of, of, of Israel. Who hated their own people. Top coons in the nation. Went unto the king. Did what? Went unto the king. Went to the white man and did what? And told them that Jonathan besieged the tower. Man, you hear what Kwame Brown and Judge Joe Brown saying? That's what they doing. Then they come out on a full fledged talk. He got, brother got nothing but top. Same thing with the bishop. Top coon after coon jump out attacking them, man. And all he trying to do is build up and raise up his people. Don't make no damn sense. Before you even get out the gate, your first enemy, your own damn brother or sister. Let's get let's go to First Maccabees because this is the spirit that they're rolling in. The book of First Maccabees, chapter one and verse eleven. Let's see where they get this mess from. Read. In, in those days, uh huh, went there out of Israel wicked men. The what? In those days, went there out of Israel uh -huh. wicked men. Them same spirits. Who persuaded many. Through their radio shows, uh, endorsements, TV deals, record deals. Read on. Saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. Make no mistake about it. The heathen that they want to make a covenant with is the white man. Understand that. Read. That are round about us. Uh-huh. For since we departed from them, mm. we have had much sorrow. Total Stockholm Central. Damn, since we left the white man, it's been bad. That's why they don't want to leave. That's why you read in the scriptures, they, wrap, they, they wrapped around with like a chain with their pride. Because who, who's making our people prideful? What are they prideful in? The white man and his money and his fame and his stardom and his status. Understand that thing, man. The scriptures got all that, man. Let's go to Proverbs 3.31. Because this is how our people be moving, man. When they sitting up there propped up thinking that they somebody on this side because yeah. they, they got the license to attack their own brother. I'm on Showtime. I got, right. I got me a contract. Right. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. Mm -hmm. Envy thou not the oppressor mm -hmm. and choose none of his ways. Right. One of the chief ways that our oppressor do was what, man? He slandered our brothers and sisters. Man, let's get down to Psalms real quick, man. I think that's Psalms 50. Yeah, 50 and 20, man. Because this is one of the ways that the white man do. He just vilifies the black man in this media, and he put up your Stephen A. Smiths. Who else be out there talking cash money against their own people? Uh, Jason Whitlock. Uh, Who, who's that? He's, a, he's another sports analyst. Okay. Who else? You got uh, your man Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, Barkley. man. Total coon. Yeah. Them brothers like that. Let's see. 
The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 20. So this is the spirit that our brothers and sisters be rolling in. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Right. That's, we're talking about Jacob and Esau. Esau speaks much evil about his brother, the children of Israel. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. D what? Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. You see that? And then they get our own people to do that, man. That's it on that. Because we got to keep it moving for time's sake. Let's go back to the video, man. So, y'all, that's what we're talking about, envy and oppress. It's not just about uh, you keeping their customs, but everything else this man does. Let's go someplace neutral where you don't ambush your guest and put all that rainbow shit in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you think that's an agenda that they're pushing? Yeah, yeah it's an agenda. I saw it when I was at UCLA 50-plus years ago. Um they started saying that they were going to destroy manhood. See, first you had the lesbians who hated men. You had the feminists who hated that they weren't men. You had the soy boy, beta boys, you'd call them now, who were white boys who couldn't make it in a white man's world. And uh, you had nothing at that point until you started getting the anti-war thing developing in the late mid sixties. And they came up with this stupid idea that war is a man thing. So the way to stop war is to change the way boys are raised to men. And if you raise them like girls, so they wanted dolls and frilly stuff and were soft and emotional, that would keep boys from becoming warlike when they got to be men so when you put that ballast into the mix uh they started taking over now a little slight history i'm gonna make it as quick as i can no take your time the late 60s color tv was bankrupting the major movie studios paramount uh, warner brothers uh mgm and such like and they started firing executives to bring people in to get new ideas. See, at that time, if you were an adult, it cost you 50 cents to go to your local movie theater. And every Thursday and Sunday, they had two new movies. Man. Three cartoons and some features. So you could walk in anytime you wanted to. For 50 cents. And, and wow. see what you would be seeing and then see the whole thing and then sit through what you missed or keep mm -hmm. sitting there. Yeah. And no matter how big a hit the movie was every Thursday and Sunday, they changed and had two more. So the studios are making like 120, 250 movies a year. And they all had the same cast of stars that were in every movie. Mm-hmm. Well, what they came up with was two things. They had these young, bright folk that were part of this crew that is going to destroy masculinity. Okay. And they said, wow, we have a market. Let's go after the black folk down at the bottom who are getting neglected. They have money to spend. And if we come up with what we term black exploitation movies, they'll come out. So the way to come out is appeal to the lowest common denominator. So let's glorify the pimps, hoes, drug dealers, thugs, bank robbers, gangsters, and everything else. Makes sense. Mm. And they started doing that, and they started glorifying dysfunction. And I heard them discussing this. They said, we need to start with two things. The black woman was the role model because she controlled her men the way they looked at it. And two, if we start experimenting on black males in trying to see if we can take them down a notch. So mm -hmm. instead of I'm black and I'm proud, Ungawa, black power, you know, Afro, you know, and a beard, uh, jeans, fatigue jacket, ready for the revolution. They came out with Superfly in 1971-72 where this dude's got process heads, you know, driving a pimp mobile, selling drugs, and they make him a hero. They had Black Caesar with um, Fred the Hammer Williams, and that plot was he was a major drug dealer who was trying to become 
the only drug dealer and he was killing and assassinating a whole lot of people. He became the hero driving off in the limo into the sunset, smoking a big Cuban cigar. Hmm. And see, they started doing that. Well, when you get this mix rolling, they also had another thing too, which was, let's take over the political party. And you used to hear them on campus talking this nonsense all the time where they'd get into the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And the thing was the Republican Party would work behind the scenes, or at least the ones that got in there. And in the Democratic Party, they'd be the voice. So from time to time, they would deliberately cause a lot of confusion. And when they caused a lot of confusion, then they could work behind the scenes and nobody would see. So slowly, they ran this propaganda and the best propaganda engine in the whole world was doing it. I mean, even Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler and Goebbels uh, for the Nazis said, we have to model what we do on the American entertainment industry because it gets in so many people's heads and we need to copy that methodology. Oh. Now, they did this, and for 50 years, they have propaganda glorifying this function. Now, if you want to see the contrast from 1920 to 1940, it's 20 years. That's all the time the Nazis had to work. This same group using... Man, he dropping some... He dropping some heavy gems in history, man, about the how they really rolled out that weaponized propaganda against our people. You want to say something, officer? I was going to say that the key part that I picked up in that was he was there and he heard them right. discussing he, it. First hand witness. There. Yeah, he was a first hand witness to hearing it. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. So listen to what the scriptures say about that because all that stuff is wicked as hell. Read that. Be not deceived. Meaning a lot of our people are deceived. Why? Evil communications corrupt good manners. Right. That right there is 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 a heavy heavy scripture and what Judge Joe Brown is talking about is that weaponized witchcraft is what that TV is where you could transmit a thought to millions of people in seconds. Like people went from wearing no masks to going outside with no problem to now they locked in their basement with two masks on, face shields, gloves on. And you know and you know the man and you know that's because the, the media is that evil communication. Absolutely. So when you when you driving down the street, you see somebody sitting in their car with two masks on in their own and car, and the now. shield in their own car by themselves. It's like, bro, this that propaganda has gotten into there. The media has become their thought, their their frame of thought and thinking. Yeah, that thing. Go ahead, officer. I was gonna say, I tell people all the time, man. If you want to kill COVID or get rid of COVID, just turn off the TV. That's it. That's the number one spreader. <laughs> yeah, that's the number one spreader. Turn that TV off. That thing right there ain't no joke, man. Let's go back. Uh, let's get that Ephesians real quick. Back up. Uh, uh what's that? Five twenty nine. I think that's what I want. Let go with that. Um, evil communication. I think that's what I want. Let me see. 429. I think it's 429. Either 429 or 529. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Uh-huh. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, mm -hmm. but that which is good to the use of edifying. Which is what? To the use of edifying. Read on. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Uh-huh. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. Right. That is a grief to the Holy Spirit. That's why you can't be up in this truth. Sister sitting at home watching a, a Bad Girls Club, um, Basketball Wives of uh, uh, Houston, and all this just foolish nonsense, man. Hey, hey, that's like her training. Right. That's her training camp. Become the chief slanderer and gossiper. And come home. As soon as her husband hit the door, he a black-ass nigga. That's the chief training to running the Negro out the house. That's dude. all That's that why is. Most of them ain't got none. Turn in the brother house. turning to Hussein Bolt. Bolt right out the door. Let's go. Let's keep it moving. Let's get Sirach chapter nine. Let's read verse fifteen because this is where our communication need to be with. Training camp. <laughs> the book of Sirach chapter nine and verse fifteen. Uh huh. Let thy talk be with the wise. Let what? Let thy talk be with the wise. No, uh, uh, Breakfast Club. Let thy talk be with the wise. Stephen A. Smith. With the wise. Uh-huh. 
and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. Read. And let just men eat and drink with thee. Right. You can't be sitting amongst coons, man, and fools. Read. And let thy glorying be in the fear of the Lord. Right. Not what the white man can give you. Go ahead, officer. I know you want to say hey, something. Hey, hey, hey. Because you got to think about it. When you look at the media that's portrayed, how many of our young sisters act like Cardi B with the same language, the same uh, uh, movements, the same body language? It's that evil communication that's pushed out there, and it affects the young girls and their mannerisms and how they act right. and how they respond and interact with people. Hey, let me get let me get a quick scripture because I know you had mentioned something earlier. Now nah, go ahead, bring it out. Give me uh, Psalms one hundred one and five. Remember back in the day when it was just a bunch of little Wayne clones. So now you're saying it's a bunch of Cardi B clones out here now. Everywhere you look, the Negro look like Little Wayne. Uh, the book of <laughs> wife beat in some raggedy dreads on their head. The book of Psalms, chapter 101 and verse 5. Who so privily slandereth his neighbor. And you see that whole, who so privily, privately slandereth his neighbor. So like we said, these a lot of these gossip media platforms are training camps for young girls to become professional slanderers. Damn, we forgot about Wendy Williams. Yeah, yeah that's a major one. Him, he, him will I cut off. You see that? The most high cutting them off. Read on. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. You see that thing? Hey, hey, this it's like they training a lot of our brothers and sisters. It's like a setup and it's a trap for them to fail. Hey, right. I got one more. I got Go one, ahead. one, one Go more. Go ahead. Bring them out. Give me uh, Psalms 94 and 20 down to 23 real quick. Real the book quick. of Psalms chapter 94 and verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity... This, have, the throne of sin, the kingdom of sin, read. Have fellowship with thee, uh huh. Which frameth mischief by a law. Which frameth mischief by law. All the sins that's in the earth, like they frame the LGBT. These laws are being framed, which are opposed to the Bible. They frame them by law, read. They gather themselves together uh -huh. against the soul of the righteous. Against the souls of the righteous. Brothers and sisters that's keeping God's laws, they gather themselves against them to destroy and to shut down the righteous movement. Right. right. Yeah, we a hate group. Yep. Who the hell yep. we hurting? Exactly. And condemn the innocent blood. And condemn us. Read. But the Lord is my defense. But the Lord is our defense. Read on. And my God is the rock of my refuge. Uh-huh, read. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity. See that thing? The Most High going to flip it back on them. Because if you notice over the last couple of years, every time Esau stars mess with the Israelites, next thing you know, something pops out. Either there's a war, plague, or something pops off. Right. Uh, now they all on drugs now. Remember how they threw all oh, the yeah, drugs yeah. in our community? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it, it's, it's affected them. Read. And shall cut them off. In their own wickedness, yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. And that even applies <clears throat> to the wickedness of our own people. Absolutely. That try to come against them. The most I going to cut them off. That's it on that. Yeah, let's go back to the judge. Let's see what my man, uh, uh, judge, uh, judge Joe Brown, got to say. Because he, he was spitting out flames the whole interview. Yeah, go ahead and bring him up. Did we move to that minute mark on there? When you take this boy and you protect him from bullies, so the parents, the police, and the schools protect him, where Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook keep him from seeing something that'll cause his stupid ass to go take himself out, <laughs> then what happens is he doesn't know this beast that's in him. Mm -hmm. And see, this beast is still there. And under the wrong circumstances, that beast comes out and starts leering at him, and he doesn't know what to do. So you get these perverted asses that go and shoot up a school because they felt bad because they got bullied too often and don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. That's a lack of masculinity. All right. these folk in the hood that go around popping caps on everybody doing drive-bys, see, they suffer from lack of masculinity. So that, I don't, that's, I don't that's the same thing I told Jack. Somebody. Yeah. But I grew up in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and South Central. And mm -hmm. what I found out from there later on and when I was sentencing people or when I was defending people, 
Dudes down in the hood, the hood rat, they just bitches. <laughs> see, they the only see what they are is lesbians in boys' bodies. Mm -hmm. The lesbian and the hood rat are raised the same way. They're raised by their mamas like girls because their mamas hate men and the boy is going to be a man if he got raised properly so they hate him and raise him wrong. He winds up with a secret hate for his mama but doesn't realize it. Mm -hmm. He's raised as a girl. He likes pussy. The lesbian is raised as a girl. She likes pussy. If the fairy god fag waved the magic wand over the lesbian and she woke up the next morning with a dick, there would be no difference between her and your typical hood rat thug trying to play OG. Mm -hmm. And these guys ain't got manhood. For example, I don't know how many times this scene repeated itself over the time I was on the bench. There would be a motion to suppress a confession, right? So the police in Memphis always take the confession. So you got to see the whole thing. So uh, counselor, defense ready for this matter. Prosecution, you ready? Madam court reporter, can you set up in the court's chambers in uh, say 10 minutes and we will take a look in camera at the video clip of this confession that we have a motion i think what's the file docket number thank you ma'am blah 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 this dude we're getting ready to take a recess and i take the recess and the lawyer walks up to ask me about something else so i'm still watching og is back there talking to his homies yeah man i'm down for the cause man you know like hey they just put this case on me, man, like, oh, hell, man. They was trying to get me to say all kinds of shit, man. I can hear it. So I go on and back. I'm watching this confession. Here's where it goes. <laughs> I don't want no lawyer. Sir, you really need to have an attorney. We can call one right now. You should have a lawyer. It's a serious matter. Uh, I don't want no lawyer. I just want my mama. Can you get my mama in here? I don't care. <laughs> well, sir, your mother can't be in here while it's going on. You a grown man. I don't care. I just want my mama. Look, sir, you have a right to remain silent. I don't care. You have a right. You know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Lord. I don't care, man. I just want to talk to my mama. And look, it was Shaw Dog and Stomp. That's crazy. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> this dude has been advised nine times of his rights that he wants to wave them and he's crying all over the shit. And that's why they got these strange stains on the a waiver. This fool's been crying. It's uh -huh. not blowing all over, running down his face. And I'd get out there and I said, Well, let's see. We've had gentlemen that have been identified uh what could you gentlemen come over here and uh, that we're going to speak to the defendant about this about he blah 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 on this matter about the bond blah 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 <laughs> so i'd move them over here i said well it seems since they have identified and so let's move to this point the defendant spent most of his time crying and watching washing tears from his face with looks like most of a box fresh blocks of kleenex and mucus was running all down his nose and <laughs> all over the table he was crying for his mother he multiply uh wave right the council or and wanted to make a statement if only his mama could be there and the officers advised man my man said if the fair <laughs> my man judge joe brown that's old school right there that's old school. So he's talking about how these, how to, you, you couldn't tell the difference between a lesbian and these uh, so-called gangsters that they said they're very emotional and effeminate. So let's get that. Give me that in uh, uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Hey, Go ahead, hey, officer. That's why they shoot you if you step on the shoes. Right. That's an emotional reaction. Right. A nigga moment. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. Uh-huh. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Oh, what? 
backsliding daughter. So the, the sisters in the nation of Israel are going backwards. You got the white woman and the Chinese woman running forward to advance their man, to advance their nation. Our sisters is running full speed in reverse. That's what they're saying. Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Uh-huh. A woman shall come past a man. Right. A woman going to be out in front of a man. Give me that in uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 3. Then we're going to go to um, 2 Chronicles. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. Read. As for my people. So as for the, uh, the, the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and it's going to make it clear that it's talking about us. Read. Children are their oppressors. You don't see Chinese kids terrorized in the neighborhoods. You don't see East Indian or Arab kids terrorized in their neighborhoods, man. Read on. And woman rule over them. Who running them? Woman rule over them. So they coming from single parent homes. The experiment has been an absolute failure. The black woman running the household has failed our community. It's time to return back to the Bible. Read on. Oh my people. Oh who? Oh my people. Read. They which lead thee. Uh huh. Cause thee to err. Read. And destroy the way of thy path. Right. That's talking about the black and Latin woman. You want to say something, officer? Yeah, I was going to say, Judge Brown just said the dude was crying for his mama. Exactly. So that's showing he didn't say nothing about the father or nothing like right. that. So it's showing you the scriptures is true. Then we're going to go to Sirach. We're going to close out with Sirach. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 22 and verse 1. So here's an example of a brother crying after his mama. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. Mm-hmm. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. Mm -hmm. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Mm -hmm. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. So this brother was 42 years old. Let's see what kind of mindset that he had. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name also Athaliah. was Athaliah, mm -hmm. the daughter of Omri. Uh-huh. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Meaning he was falling behind a woman. In other words, this brother was still living in his mama's basement at 42 years old, man. For his mother was his counselor. Oh, what my mama. My mama says. To do wickedly. Right. This brother waived all his rights. Not calling for a lawyer. He said he won his mama. What's she going to do? That's, that's that same spirit. So let's go to for, uh, Sirach. Let's go to Sirach 47 and 19, because we got, we got to hurry up. The book of Sirach, chapter 47 and verse 19. Uh-huh. Thou didst bow thy loins unto a woman. Uh, wh what? Thou didst bow uh -huh. thy loins unto a woman. Uh, damn, meaning you gave the woman your balls, in other words. Read. <laughs> and by the body... Thou was brought into subjection. Right. So that our brothers, man, look, our brothers lay themselves down over the body of a woman, man. They just, just totally go off the rails, man. That's some heavy stuff. A lot of people don't know that stuff is in the scriptures. Scriptures don't, don't lie, man. Yeah. No, they don't lie. Let's go to, uh, let's run a video. We got another video. Just uh, Brown breaking it down. Go ahead and get that. Violence, which is in fact criminal. Now, they don't go after her. They just have this thing on Trump. Now, I don't particularly like Trump, but I'm not against him. I did not vote for that damn fool that they had running against him. That racist dog, which I heard the first time in 1972 when I was doing an intern thing at a D.C. think tank, when he was out there with James O. Eastland, John B. Stennis, Faubus came in from Arkansas. That's the fool who said they'd never integrate the uh, Little Rock High School. They had Wallace there who was wheeled in, and they had Bird, former Grand Dragon of the Klan, and they were talking about this young man who had a stupid-looking ducktail like he was back in the 1950s, was the last true yellow dog Dixiecrat. And they were talking about Joe Biden, who mm -hmm. got up there, and when the speech he gave, I mean, I was really offended. I heard it right outside the state capitol building in Dover which was a rundown, ransacked old house, 250 years old. Mm -hmm. And he said, Negro children are like roaches. If they're allowed to integrate the schools, they will infest them and they will never be gotten out. Negro. Who said that? Joe Biden said that? Yeah, I heard it. Wow. Saw wow. it. Mm. 
he said Negroes were animals and they turned the streets into jungles. And he and Senator Eastland had a plan where they could put all of these Negro animals in zoos. Now, we talk about the 94 crime bill. That wasn't shit. The 91 was bad. The 91 was really bad. The 81 was the one where one rock got you five years, which due to some other stuff Biden and Dennis and Eastland did, it wasn't five years with parole. They abolished federal parole. So you get five years, you get 60 months, and you get released with all good and honor time at 56 months from federal custody. So that you, you first of all, that he said a lot in that little short time. Uh, the first thing that he said that you really got to pay attention for uh, to is that he was at NDC as an intern at a think tank. So those think tanks, they take the top of the top, and they have uh, the smartest uh, people there. They try to bring them in so they can take them out of because he said he grew up in South Central. So he was in the hood. So they'll take the brightest kids out of the hood to utilize them to keep empowering their empire. So let's give an example of that. Let's go to the book of Daniel's chapter uh, 3, uh, 1, verse 3. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, and verse 3. And the king spake unto Asphanas, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Read. Children in whom was no blemish. You see that? Perfect children. Read. But well favored and skillful in all wisdom. You see that? Skillful in all wisdom. Read. And cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. So what was Joe Brown? He was uh, a judge. That's a high position. You can't become a judge by not being highly intelligent. So they had him. They was grooming him. Basically, the reason why Judge Joe Brown knows so much is because they was grooming him to work for the system, but he went, he, he did it against his people, but he did his own thing. Read. Keep reading. And whom they might, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So to further their empire. So that's the same thing they were doing with Judge Joe Brown, but he, he didn't go along with the program. Oh, let's go down to verse 20. Get verse 20. Verse 20. And in all matters of. Start from 19. Yeah, get uh, 19. Verse 19. 19 and, 20. And, the king command, and, and the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. So he got the best and the brightest. So that's the same thing America do. They started out in elementary school. They had special programs like yep. the tag class, gifted and talented, all that. They start separating the real bright ones. And then they'll send them to special programs or special colleges and groom them. And then they'll send them off to different fields, think tanks and things like that, like Judge Joe Brown, you know, coming from the hood. You go on, you, they invite you in to these programs with the, uh, with the plan that you're going to stay, you know, they're going to be able to entice you with different things. Keep reading. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding. That the king inquired of them. Because they used those smart brains to keep powering up their empire, to keep building and expanding their empire and their power. Read. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in, his, in all his realm. You see that? So just like back then, you got the same thing that's going on today. Right, right, right. It's just like, for example, all of the black inventors... Yeah that Esau done took advantage of their invention and made it their own to advance their kingdom. Intellectual property rights, nigga. That's what they tell you. So now, then he went on to talk about when he was at the think tank, he heard Joe Biden, and, you know, because they speak like this around people like that because they right. figure that everybody's there has got the same agenda. Down with the agenda. Yeah, they down with the agenda. So, and, and Joe Biden, he's a liberal, right? So let's go ahead and get the scripture. Go ahead and get Isaiah. And he says some of the most horrible things about our oh, people. Man. And our people love this dude. Oh, man. they do. This dude ain't done a damn thing for But the lock Negro. Negroes up. That's all he done. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. So let's let you know that these people that we call liberals are vile people. 
They'll get up and make speeches like like uh, Joe Biden made. Read. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. Read. For the vile person will speak villainy. Just like he spoke. He said all he said African Americans or, or, or Negroes were like He said niggas, man. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> he said they was like roaches. If you let them get into the school, they're going to infest and take it over. Read. And his heart will work iniquity. Evil. To practice hypocrisy. Say one thing, because what did he say when he was running? If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Say it, Micah. If you don't vote, if black people don't vote for me, you ain't black. He said, y'all niggas ain't black. And then he said, we can't pass no stand-on legislation. The Armenians got paid for their so-called genocide. The Chinese man got his own exclusive bill. He thanked the Negro for saving democracy and didn't do a, ain't done a damn thing. He going to go visit the three survivors from the Tulsa massacre. Come no, on, man. No, the worst part is they gave her a pair of Jordans like that was reparations. They, they, they put her in a pair of Air Jordans into the whole photo shoot. The media, black the people, one of the total uh, survivors, the sister, they put her in some Air Jordans like it was all better. She's in a wheelchair. What's she going to do with them Jordans? <laughs> Bro, black people loving it. Hey, look, man, I ain't even going to comment that, on that. That right there is the highest form of mockery, man. It is, man. Okay. To you, practice hypocrisy. And to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. So that's letting you know that these people ain't going to do nothing for us. That's what they're going to do. Absolutely nothing. Read. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor. So that like wicked devices like the welfare system, his crime bill, all these different things that destroy you secretly. Don't forget the job elimination. Oh yeah, the getting rid of the the the, the, the tech programs in the school. The um, what you call the uh, remember man Barry oh, had yeah. the jobs program. Got a whole bunch of brothers hired in the city, man. That junk gone. Read to destroy the poor with lying words. That's what they do. They just tell you lies. You vote for me, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z, and they ain't did nothing. E- even when the needy speaketh right. Yeah, even when our people look, man, Joe, we're going to go out, we're going to support you. He up in the church. We're going to do all this and do that. Even when they speaking, you know, they speaking. He don't, he don't reciprocate uh, nothing back. It's all one way. Read. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Lamentations 4 and 17. Let's get that. Because this is our people, man. We keep looking to the oppressor to save us. That's what we do, man. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. As for our eyes, as yet failed for our vain help. That's what our people do every four years, looking for their vain help. Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Because we think that America is our country. You know, it's uh, what they call it? Uh, a great melting pot. Yeah, the great melting pot and all this other stuff. And our people really think they got a seat at the table somewhere. Read. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. Because you can't even walk out on the street without being terrified. You worried about getting shot down by the police or your own people. Your own yeah, all your own brothers. Read. For our end is come. Read verse 19. Our prosecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. So I was letting you know, this is talking about the Edomite nation. Read. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. All right, so let's get, let me get, uh, let me get, uh, go ahead. Hey, you can got? you bring up those bring, two joints? I just sent. This right here is just outrageous, man. Bring up the photo and then the uh, Twitter link. Total. Viola, Viola Fletcher, one of the survivors of the Tulsa race massacre, was just outside taking pictures and showing us her new shoes. She was seven years old when she witnessed a white mob destroy her home a hundred years ago this week. And they got the damn devil out there posing with it. And she just got the consolation prize for that. You get a pair of Jordans. And a yeah. basketball jersey. Yeah, and a basketball jersey. You, you survived our harsh treatment, so here's your prize. She got a, a pair of shoes. Uh, bro, I'm, the same people that destroys your home going to turn around and give you a pair of shoes. And and hey, a basketball hey, jersey. And look, and who and who who controls Tulsa, Oklahoma now? Esau. It was a black-funded town 
But now Esau got that thing. Man, man this thing is the, crazy. The, the, it's just his past offensive. All that trauma she witnessed, a hundred, you still know justice, and your reward is some damn Jordans. Get the other one. That was made in China for 50 cents. Not a screenshot I posted. The screenshot. The screenshot. The image. Yeah, the screenshot. So these same shoot, the, all, like all these shoot magazines that black people love, Bro. love subscribing to, giving their money to. You can't make this stuff up. You can't. That's an insult. Because it, it's look, past insult. It, any, any, any Israelite that's righteous and got common sense will tell them to shove them shoes up their behind. Anybody I'll be would. slaughter my people. Yeah, bro. If we bring in anything else, I'll run the video. Go, oh, you got a, you got something else to bring up. All right, bring up the picture. There All it right. is right there. I'm, I'm going to read the headline first. Zoom in so I can read the headline. From Complex Sneakers, 107-year-old Viola Fletcher wearing her first ever pair of Air Jordans. Mother Fletcher is the oldest living survivor of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. And the highlight of that is them giving her a pair of Jordans. I can't believe it, man. This is on the screen. A race massacre. You survived it. The Armenians just got billions of dollars. They get a Negro some Jordans. Our people just sick and dumb. Somebody, where her grandkids at? Hey, Somebody should have just exactly. got their ass whooped. They Straight be, up. They that, should be that giving got over me the city high. to her and her family. This nigga come over there some Jordans that didn't kill your whole hey, family. Look, look Somebody should have got there, pistol though. whipped so, out there from that foolishness, man. This is why... S-H-I-T never gets done. What the F is so heartwarming about a massacre survivor wearing some J's? Hey, look, man. <laughs> you ain't black if you don't vote for me. I'll give you some Jordans. And Charlamagne just sat there and just let him say that. Yeah. Dang. That John is crazy right there, man. Let's go ahead and run the video, man. We got to go into the other half of this mess. Go ahead and get that. that bastard did and then you got come queen la imhoff in there you know who imhoff is no yeah she does who mrs imhoff vice president of the united states who goes by her maiden name miss kamala uh, camilla harris <laughs> <laughs> she's got two jewish children she adopted married a jewish husband Got a I'm scared to talk about Kamala Harris. I'm gonna let you have that one. <laughs> nah, she's a witch, and she is a corrupt witch. She's been corrupt her whole life, and she fucked her way to the top. Oh, Lord. They used to detail this witch in the L.A. Times with her sexual escapades. She mm. fucked damn near everybody trying to get up. She used to be a frat hoe when she was at Howard, and she ain't black. You know I ain't got to do with this, Miss Harris. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, well, don't, <laughs> but she's a... Uh, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just listening. Well, uh, here's the thing. I actually met her father mm -hmm. in Jamaica. I was the guest set at the governor general's table, and he was a professor. Okay. And he represents as a Hindu Brahmin. He admittedly has some Irish in him. Mm -hmm. All right? The person that Camilla Harris is saying is her black great grandmother is in fact, according to Daddy, in an article he wrote, which has now been cleaned up on the online edition of that magazine, mm -hmm. was a Hindu house servant, not mm -hmm. a black woman. So her mother is listed on her birth certificate as Caucasian, even though she's dark, but she she's a Hindu brahmin to meal cast now interestingly do you know what the anthropological name is for what in, uh camilla harris and her parents are mm -mm. no sir indo indo hyphen aryan see they are the original aryans but adolf hitler and his boys told a big lie the blonde haired blue-eyed aryans from the far north did not exist never existed they were the dark to swarthy to paper bag brown, dark eyed, dark, coarse haired Indo Aryans from the India, mm. from India. Mm -hmm. Those actually settled Germany and some other people came in from 
the steps that lightened everything up a bit. Mm -hmm. So that lie is being told. So you get the Aryan Brotherhood, the Aryan Nation. What's going on is the Aryans they claim to be uh, one with look like Cum Queen La or Cum Queen Harris. You know, I guess what she did is, you know, L.A. Times ranked her out. I was out in L.A. You know when she was really I haven't right. seen this article before that. See, she got out and they ran a thing that when she went to law school, Willie Brown, that was his mistress. They used to have guards. I heard about that. that though. Where Dad, what I loved, it was a scene Willie Brown sitting behind a desk with his tongue hang out and Camilla is raising up after doing him, you know. Mm. And, uh, they ran this thing where he got her a job with a medical supply company that did business with the city of San Francisco. He got mm -hmm. her a gig for 15 hours a week mm -hmm. for 72,000 a year. And you have to understand that was 35 years ago. Mm. And then when they carried a thing where she moved up to 20 hours a week, she getting paid 120 grand for a part-time gig. And he bought her a 750 I BMW. Mm -hmm. She was earning that. So then she had this thing where she was trying to get on with this brewing one of your buddies, an NBA player who was their biggest client. So she wow. got hired. So then they ran a scandal. Hey, look, man, Judge Brown don't play around, man. No, nah, he don't. He from the old school. He not he with that political school. correct beta male uh, simp. And he, uh, and he was over there, so he right. saw all that. Right, he's saying? a witness. He was right there, he's a witness. And this, those stories that he ain't making them up because them stories is out there, well documented. I think it was a, like a news article or something. Right, like that, yeah, from nineteen ninety four from the San Francisco. Uh, what's the name? Yeah, we she was put on the there. She was on a prostitute. There. Right, and ain't nobody gonna come after him for slander. Escort, yeah, she again, was a highly paid escort. Right, nobody gonna come after that brother for slander. So that's how you know everything he's saying is true. Man, that's a combination they got leading the country right now. That thing is funny. Give me hey, but then, but then again, you got to think about it. Look at the madness they got. It makes sense they put a highly, a highly paid escort as the vice president when you uh got Cardi B as a representation of so called black people. Damn. They ain't say She's a one day stripper. you can screw your way to vice president. That's a domestic to all the little black girls out here. All right, let me get two more scriptures. Let me get uh, Ecclesiastes seven and twenty six. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. Just like Camilla Harris. And her hands as bands. Because she passed crime bill. She uh she was the ones that uh, locked up a whole bunch of brothers with uh, Joe Biden's crime bill. Over there, read. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. You see that? That's some heavy stuff right there. Let's go to uh, where we want to go. Sirach. Yeah, let me get Sirach 26 and 22. I'm going to get that, and that's going to be it. Yeah. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 22. An harlot shall be accounted as spittle. A what? An harlot shall be accounted as spittle. So we don't care what your title is. You still a harlot. Right. Like, you spittle. Know, you're going to be that's, counted as spittle. That's Nothing. the vice president. That's the vice president. Damn. But, read. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. Read, read verse 25. Verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman. You screwing your way to the top. You done made it literally all the way to the top. Judge Joe Brown laid it out clear. Yeah, read. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. All right, that's all I got. All right, let's get the uh, video, uh, what is it, from 107. Play the video from 107. And remember the title, The Plot to Feminize the Black Man. This thing has been going on for years, but they planned it several years ago. Back in the 50s. Yeah, back in the 50s. All right, play the video. You know, we got to, I'll tell you about that later. But yeah. anyway, we have a fight because what it is is a unique opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
you go to World War II, you got Stalin, he represents communism. You got Churchill, he represents monarchy. You have uh, Franklin Roosevelt, he represents a democratic republic. They're all allies trying to get rid of Adolf and the Japanese Empire. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. They had a common cause. Well, we have a common cause that's unique in American history. For the first time, black, white, brown, red, yellow have a commonality, and that is an assault on manhood, womanhood, and childhood that certain people are trying to pull off and ram down our throats. We have a separation of church and state, so the state cannot impose an official religion. They can't require its teaching. They can't make you go to church, but yet you can take a secular religion, LGBTQ, and you can force feed it to children with the parents having no way of objecting or opting out except taking the child out of school. They mm -hmm. cram it down your throat in the public. They make it official government policy that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You you know, go to the bathroom of the gender you identify with rather mm -hmm. than what you were born as. And, you know, that leaves all kinds of freak activity open. And, I mean, for God's sake, it used to be a staple for 1960s, 70s, and early 80s sitcoms where the little nerds went and masqueraded as girls so they could get in the locker room and watch the girls strip for gym. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the situation, see, where they have to share locker rooms, shower facilities, and you got some naked soaked down sissy in there, at least he says he is, and his dick's hung out and a bunch of naked little girls trying to take showers? Mm. Just so they can, shower, they can shower with women now? I didn't know that. Yeah, see, that goes in there too. No, not just the bathroom. So yeah. can you imagine the viciousness that's going to go around is gossip in that high school? Mm. See, that just like, where in the hell has you been? So speaking on that, I think that's a good segue to go into. Hey, the madness. And this this, this is all a part of their agenda that they pushing. Esau's returning right back to their roots. When you look at the history in Rome and Greece, the, 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 they had sex with children, yeah. bestiality, all vow, all of that stuff. When you look at the history of Caligula, this was stuff they did common. They bringing all of that stuff right back around, making, making all of that mischief into laws. Hey, let's get uh, Leviticus 18 and uh, 9. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 9. The nakedness of thy sister the daughter of thy father mm -hmm. or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. See, that's a basic law. But guess what? Do you got family members that be uh, uh, peeping on each other, looking at each other nakedness or having sex with one another? Hell yeah, that goes on. That goes on. And that's a commonality amongst some families. The Read. nakedness of thy son's daughter... Or thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Mm -hmm. For theirs is thine own nakedness. So now, even see how that, the most I put laws into place. But Esau and their kingdom are creating laws to oppose all of that. Like right now, you got your LGBT that runs rampant. The next thing you know, you got your uh, Nambler setting up so they can now institute the uh, pedophilia. Pedophilia running rampant. Yeah, let's get that. Verse 22. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Now that goes right into your LGBT. This is a law from the Most High God. Thousands of years old. But see, Esau don't want to do that thing. These other nations don't want to do that thing. Read. It is abomination. It's an abomination. Read the next verse. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Hey, they pushing that same thing, too. It's just a matter of time. Like, who would have thought, who would have thought that two men would be marrying each other? When you think back to the 70s, 60s, all of that stuff, even early, yeah, early 90s, you wouldn't have never thought that two men would legally be marrying each other. But guess what? Esau said, hey, if we're going to bring it to Now, they brought Barack Obama in. That's what happened. That was the Trojan horse. That brought that madness into the black community. Now, 
Stone Cold bro, Stand Up Brothers now talking about it's okay to, hey, to swap up hey, the bathroom. And remember, we just read the scripture on how about liberals lie. He, uh, when he came in, black people said, like, oh, we're going to get some real change. They was worshiping this dude like he was Moses or Jesus. No, they got to change. Tell them, Mendel. Yeah, they got to change, change in their pockets. That was it. And he changed the daggone women, uh, men and the women. Uh, <laughs> changed up your oh, bathrooms. Man. That was it. <laughs> so, just to back up what you said, Officer Phineas, right now in the US of A, it's legal to marry animals. Well, bestiality is legal in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you eight see that states. Thing? It's still legal. Is what? Legal. Is legal. Bestiality, bestiality is legal in the United States, in, in yep. Babylon the Great. You see this thing? This is your kingdom. This is the hey, this is the kingdom that so many of our people trust in. They trust in their oppressor and they'll fight you tooth and nail to defend. Oh yeah, Negro, if you tell a Negro you ain't vote for Biden, that... man, look. Oh, hey, I'm gonna name the states. Hawaii, Kentucky, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Vermont, West Virginia, no surprise Wyoming, there. Wyoming, Ohio, and Washington, D.C. Damn! Damn! That's that liberal city. Hey, you see that thing? Damn. Old boy, hey, old boy be out there. Ain't nobody gonna separate me from my goat. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you see that thing, bro? Damn, bro. Babylon the Great. Hey, the mystery of iniquity. Hey, let's get, let's get the next verse, bro. We running out of time. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, and verse 17. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter. You see that? And see her nakedness, uh -huh. and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. You see that? The Mosai has very simple laws laid out, but this kingdom is opposed to all of those laws of the Mosai. Eventually, they're going to target the Bible and try to take that thing out. Read. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. You see that? It's a sin. So then let's get, let's play, let's get uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, 14, 23. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 23. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices. That's going into your abortion. Or used secret ceremonies. Or made revelings of strange rites. That's partying of strange rites. But them wild hey, ass parties they throw yeah, now, Yeah, they be having wild orgies and all these type of yep. secret things. They be doing this thing all. And this is a commonality. This is not like or something odd or strange. These things are common in, in, in Babylon the Great. Read. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. You see that thing undefiled. So that means now in their swinger merges, parties. they swing, they bring doing swinger parties, mm -hmm. they bring in the dog, they they bring in other uh, other couples into the midst. Remember that, that pastor that had the pool hop dude we, we brought out on the show a little while ago. He was he was yeah, he was uh, uh he was bringing boys into this house to help them so called help oh, them yeah. rehabilitate and he was letting the boys have sex with his wife while yep. he watched. While he watching. And he also wanted to. And he was, yeah. he was a homosexual. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what he was. Hey, go ahead. Finish that up. But either one slew another traitorously or grieved him by adultery. All right, let's go to. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, finish it up, bro. So that there reigned in all men without exception blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, Unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind. Hey, changing of kind. So now what, what does Esau create by mischief? What mischief they put in the law? You can change a man into a woman and a, 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 a woman into a man, and you got kids. Oh, they, 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 they don't, you can't give them what their sex they are. It's right. all confusion. Obamatrons and Bidenites out all here. All confusion. Let's get 1 Corinthians 7 and 1 through 4. One through four. Hey, we can't the forget about your man Biden with that uh, little girl that he was talking about. Looked like a 19-year-old with her legs crossed. Yeah. He had the video out there. Pedophile. Do we got that? The, we don't you got that it. video? No. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, uh -huh. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Mm -hmm. 
Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Because it goes into the to, to, to lust. Read to let, avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. So this is a law that the Most High established to keep things in order. If you got a brother that's dealing with lust, hey, it's better that you, to avoid fornication, marry. Get married. That's to keep you out of the midst of sin, to keep the order, to keep the nation in order. Read. And let every woman have her own husband. Uh-huh. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. That means sex. Read. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Uh-huh. This is the reason why. The wife hath not power of her own body, mm -hmm. but the husband. Read. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Here's the point. Read verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other. Meaning don't refrain from one another. Because remember the point that we read earlier in verse 2. Read. Except it be with consent for a time uh -huh. that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. So fasting and prayer, and of course, when the sister's on her cycle, that's when you don't lay with each other. Read. And come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Meaning a lack of control. Because remember what verse 2 said. All right, so now let's jump to, um, let's play this video. Let's get into your video. Uh, start at 111 in 33 seconds. Somebody's war criminal crimes against humanity type becomes a worthy of note because he exercised power. Mm -hmm. I think you're right about the attack on masculinity because I said something about uh, DJ Envy. They, they had a thing on, online going around where uh, Bill Gates allegedly cheated and had a side mistress and DJ Envy allegedly cheated. And uh, Bill Gates w was able to keep his stuff quiet and move on like a man. And uh, D DJ Envy had to go in front of the world and uh, a bunch of women and apologize to all the women in the world, you know, when now it should have been personal with his wife. So I told him he need to be on the leash and be drunk around with his wife. Because <laughs> to me, that's not a man. That, that's a good suggestion. How yeah, he need Wade, a leash. One of your former colleagues, Wade, talking about his wife wears the pants in the family. I well, just in thought his that. Case, that's literally true because he's letting that boy his wear dresses and he's wearing kilts, mm -hmm. <laughs> so he doesn't have on pants either. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a cop out. Mm -hmm. and, and other thing, you gonna let an eight year old decide that he uh, wants to be a girl? He hadn't even got a good heart on yet. How the hell is he? He doesn't even know what pussy is. How the hell are you gonna make that determination? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what you see? That's what they want. They want mm -hmm. some nice tender booty for them to deal with. Mm -hmm. See, I found out something about pedophiles when I was sentencing them. I'd mm -hmm. get them psychologically evaluated. Mm -hmm. They'd had a guy sitting in the chair with transducers on. They get his blood pressure, and everything. And All right, let's uh, let's continue. Let's make it quick. Second Maccabees, the nine. book of the book of Second Maccabees, chapter nine and verse five. But the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless came upon him and sore torments, torments of the inner parts. Hey, so this is, this is how the Most High, Most High brought plagues upon Nicanor. Read. And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Yeah, you see that thing? So the most high can cause sickness and plagues upon you. And when you're in the midst of you committing that sin, you're in the midst of that fornication, that sin. Hey, because even my brothers and sisters that are in that uh, homosexual lifestyle, they can still repent and get the kingdom. But they got to make haste to do that thing. A lot of times they get caught up in that, in that vow affection one towards another, and they get caught up in that, in, caught up in the world, and they don't repent, and they end up hating the Most High and the laws because the laws tell it what it is. It's an abomination. But hey, y'all brothers and sisters still can repent of that sin and uh, start keeping God's laws and get the kingdom. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-three and verse seventeen. Uh huh. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. You see that thing? There are supposed to be no whores of the daughters of Israel. 
This is also a law in place to keep the nation of Israel in order. These We can't be, be doing what these other nations be doing. Read. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. You see that thing? No son of Israel was ever supposed to be a sodomite. Man. Now let's get uh, Romans. Actually, let's get, uh, let's see. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians. Judge Joe Brown was dropping some heavy stuff in there. So how are you going to let an eight-year-old decide what he is, man? Yep. This just is the, the madness of our people, bro. 2 and uh, 13. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, mm -hmm. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Then the law is spiritual. Compare Read on. But the natural man. That, that the man of sin, the man of flesh that's in, indulging in the Babylon the great, that's not keeping God's laws. Read. Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of they, God. They don't understand that thing. They don't understand the Bible. It's a mystery to them. They say, oh, no, that's your interpretation. You know, you can do all things along with even Christ. And we're literally looking at them like, this dude is dumb. Read. For they are foolishness unto him. Uh huh. It's foolishness unto us. The, the, is, us teaching out there on the streets is foolishness unto them. They're like, these dudes, fools out here. They don't realize we're trying to save their soul. Read. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They are, uh huh. Read on. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Read. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh huh. Now, hey, jump over to, um, 18, uh, 1 and 18. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You see that? They, that is foolishness. They preaching. What? Read on. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. We understand it is the power of God. Now jump down to, uh, what's that? Verse 20, 25. 20, yeah, 25. Let's do 25, 26. Verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. So hold on. That foolishness, which was preaching, is wiser than your man. That goes right back to what we read earlier. That natural man, he don't understand. Read. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Uh-huh. Read. For, see ye, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh... Not many mighty, not many noble are called. You see that thing? And the point in that, it says, after the flesh, meaning the natural man, meaning those brothers and sisters that's not called. That's why a lot of times in this truth, we understand that the most high is the one that calls. He's the one that wakes your brothers and sisters up and make them to see. Read. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world uh -huh. to confound the wise. You see that? Chosen the foolish thing of preaching to confound the wise. That's why this truth cannot be spoken against. Right. And brothers are low and no stature. Yep. Yep. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Mm -hmm. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. All praises. That Read. That no flesh should glory in his presence. All praises. Hey, and that's why we out here in preaching, telling our brothers to come out of that homosexual lifestyle, even though the mighty Babylon the Great has made that into a law. It said it's fine for you to do this thing. But the foolishness of preaching, we're right. teaching against that. You brothers and sisters, repent. And keep the laws of the Most and High And it's God. so powerful because the Most High getting all the glory because he's not using famous men yep. to push this truth. He's doing a base thing where nobody can say, well, that thing went off because such and such was out there preaching the gospel. Yep. His brother's out here pushing the truth. We ain't no reputation, man. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Uh -huh. Read. No one of these shall fail. Not one of these prophecies, laws, statutes, and commandments shall fail. Read. None shall want her mate. And a no book can match up to the Bible. The book of prophecy, laws, statutes, and commandments. Read. For my mouth it hath commanded, uh -huh. and his spirit it hath gathered them. Now jump the over to uh, 46 and 10. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Verse 9. 
Remember the former things of old, mm -hmm. for I am God and there is no one else. There is no one else like the Most High God. Read. I am God and there is none like me. Mm -hmm. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning. So the, all of the prophecies is already here. He declared the end of things from the beginning of the Bible, from creation. Read. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Not done yet. Read. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So all this is according to the will of the Father. His counsel shall stand, and they are, hey, let God be true and every man a liar. And with that family, with that, say shalom. shalom. Most, shalom. High Christ, Most high Christ, Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots.